So Sony went ahead and released their new update for their A7S III, which is gonna be the S Cinetone Picture Profile. Now previously, you could only find the S Cinetone Picture Profile on the higher end cinema cameras that Sony offered, such as the FX9. Thankfully, Sony did a great thing for their consumers and they went ahead and made an update available for the A7S III users like myself to be able to now download and put the actual S Cinetone Picture Profile into our A7S III's. So in this video, we're gonna be covering what S Cinetone is, how to properly install S Cinetone, and how to properly expose for s no matter if you're exposing for skin tones or you're exposing for non-subjects such as uh, places, things, environments, just anything that doesn't have to do with skin tones or people in general. So we're going to cover those three things and I will also be having a video releasing comparing s cinetone versus S-Log3. I'm not gonna do s cinetone versus S-Log3 versus a standard picture profile because with the release of s cinetone that is basically trying to take over the actual standard picture profile that people would use instead of using S-Log3. And I actually do have a video that just released recently describing what log format is. So if you haven't checked out that video to go ahead and figure out what log format is as far as S-Log2 and 3, go ahead and click the link in the description so you can go ahead and check that video out as well. So what is s cinetone s cinetone is Sony's picture profile taken from the color science and Cine Alta Venice. While Venice and S709 provides images that closely match the film color you'd see in movies, s cinetone is taking the images and giving a cinematic look in both the tone and color for the video and digital world. It gives similar colors to Venice, but it has increased contrast so that it can be uploaded and viewed directly with minimum to no color grading whatsoever. Basically, more or less what you see from your camera is what you'll get when you bring that into your editing software. And it may require a little bit of a color grade, but not as in depth as if you were using a format such as recording in log. Now again, s Cinetone was created for the fast paced environment, for the fast paced filmmaker who may not have the time or the resources to really go into a full in-depth color grading situation as if they were shooting in a log format such as S-Log 2 or 3. So the new s Cinetone profile that has been put into the A7S 3 is a fast paced situation if you need to go straight from shooting with a quick turnaround time and giving a quick edit to be able to be uploaded to whatever platform that you're gonna view the video. So real quick, let's go ahead and cover how to install s Cinetone into your actual A7S III. So you'll need to go to Sony's website and download the update that they have. I'll leave a link in the description to go to the actual website link. Once you've downloaded, make sure you have your cord to go from the camera to your computer, your Sony A7S III, and a fully charged battery in your camera. You'll extract your zip folder and then start the install. Follow the instructions and once you hit next a few times, the actual install will begin. For some reason, if it's having problems installing, it will tell you why it's not able to start the install. But once you hit next a couple times, it should actually start the install. And the install process for me took about 20 minutes. So if you got something to do, go ahead and step away from your computer and go ahead and let that finish up. Now, once your actual download has completed and the install is completed, you'll know it's actually finished and processed correctly once you hit the finish button and go into your A7S III and go to your picture profile options and you should now see a picture profile 11 and that is going to be the s Cinetone option. For all of my log users, no matter if you're using S-Log2 or 3, make sure if you're going to use s Cinetone that you turn your Gamma Display Assist off. This is going to give a bad look if you're using s Cinetone because it's already an image that has been baked into the camera. So remember, you're not shooting in log anymore, you're shooting in a profile that they provided. So go ahead and turn Gamma Display Assist off when you are using s Cinetone Picture Profile 11. Now when it comes to exposing for s Cinetones, you're either going to expose for one of two options. You're either going to expose for skin tones or you're going to want to expose for non-subjects. Now, no matter if you're shooting for skin tones or non-subjects, you're still going to want to always keep your ISO in either 100 or 2000. This is going to be the sweet spots for shooting in s Cinetone, similar to how shooting in log format, the sweet spots is the 640 ISO and the 12800 ISO. So no matter what zebras you're shooting for, if you're shooting for skin tones or non-subjects, make sure you always have your ISO in 100 or 2000. So for this video on the test to figure out which zebra settings you should be using when you're exposing for both the skin tones as well as shooting for non-subjects, I did this in two different lighting environments. So the first test was filming in non-controlled lighting environment and that was gonna be shooting outside. And then the second filming option was gonna be shooting in controlled lighting inside of my room with the actual artificial lighting I used to light up for my YouTube videos. Now for this video, I'm gonna only be showing you the actual skin tone zebra settings that I did in the non-controlled and the controlled lighting environments. I'm not gonna be showing the non-subject uh, zebra patterns that I tested out and I'll explain that after I show you the actual skin tone zebra test in both the non-controlled and the actual controlled 
lighting environments. So let's go ahead and check out the actual skin tones as far as being in the non-controlled real quick, and then we'll go straight into showing you the controlled lighting as far as the skin tones. Now that we've seen examples in both the non-controlled lighting environment and the controlled lighting environment, the results that I found best worked for me was the 65 plus or minus five or the 70 plus when it came to setting up your zebras to expose for the skin tones. Now, when I did shoot in the zebra options of the 55 plus and 60 plus options, I didn't like those images because it seemed to give too much of an underexposed look. And then anything past that 70 plus option, basically I tried to shoot in 75 plus, 80 plus, and I didn't even go past 80 plus. Um, it basically gave too much loss in detail as far as the skin tones. And I started to actually notice hot spots in my actual skin tones and in the actual image itself. Basically, I would see certain parts of my face be exposed correctly, but then there would be certain uh, parts in my actual face that would be a little bit more brighter and a little bit overexposed from that line. So when it comes to shooting for your skin tones as far as setting up your zebras, I would go with either the 65 plus or minus five or the 70 plus option. Now, when it comes to setting up your zebras and exposing for non-subjects, I've seen a lot of people say that they're shooting in 100 plus for their zebras. And I've also seen some people say that they're actually going off of what Sony recommends for s which is exposing in the 109 plus for non-subjects. When it comes to shooting and exposing and setting your zebras up for non-subjects, I would set your zebras up at either the 95 plus or minus five or the 100% plus option. The reason why I would recommend either 95 plus or minus five or the 100 plus option is, is because anything past 100 plus is not broadcast safe, which means you're gonna have blown out highlights and loss of detail that you're not gonna be able to get back when you actually bring this footage into your editing software and you wanna go to upload it. So in other words, even though the s Cinetone option does allow you to go all the way to 109 plus, it's kind of irrelevant when you already know that anything past 100 plus is not broadcast safe and it's not gonna be able to actually be viewed anyways when you actually go to edit and upload it. So this is why I would only shoot for non-subjects as far as your zebras in either the 95 plus or minus five or the 100 plus option. For anyone who's tested out the s Cinetone picture profile on their A7S III already, let me know down in the comments which actual zebra setting you found best for both your skin tones and the non-subjects. And also let me know down in the comments which actual percentage zebra you found best in these examples that you liked or that looked the best to your eye when it came for these skin tones in both the non-controlled and the controlled lighting environment in this video. And as always guys, if you did find this video helpful, do me a huge favor, it does help this channel grow. Go ahead and like, comment, and share this video as well as subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the content that is releasing onto this channel. Stay safe guys. I love you and I'll see you on the next video.